So The Defenders is the fifth series in the Marvel Netflix universe. Here are the four heroes of the previous four shows, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, must come together to stop the five fingers of the hand. The hand wants to come together to gain power and destroy New York City, so our defenders must stop them. Now, this series very much is a continuation of the plot of season two of Daredevil as well as Iron Fist. The hand plays very, very heavily into both of those seasons, and this is a continuation of both of those stories. So if you haven't seen those seasons, you probably want to do a little bit of research on uh, Wikipedia. There's several art uh, videos on YouTube kind of explaining what you need to know going into the defenders, but there's a lot of backstory that this is a continuation of those seasons. Overall, if you checked out my review of the first episode of this season, I was pretty negative on that episode. And I gotta say, the first episode of this season is by far the weakest. I was much happier with the rest of the season. It went where I wanted it to go. It went where I expected it to go. The first episode was just really dull and just a lot of catch up. Um, overall, this is a very cool season. Did what I wanted it to do. It had the cool action sequences. You had the fun banter between the characters. There were actual stakes that mattered. Things happened that will change the courts of the Netflix universe in the future. All the sorts of things that I wanted to happen happened in this show. So there's kind of my general sentiments about it. Now let's talk about the good. Right off the bat, if you loved Daredevil, the things you loved about Daredevil continue on here. Whether that's that cast of characters, the rapport between them, the great action sequences, it's all here. As well as that character arc of the torn Matt Murdock between trying to be the lawyer attorney friend and trying to be the devil of Hell's Kitchen. You see all that tension within him, the battling back and forth throughout the whole season and real kind of character arcs as to how he relates to other people. If you liked Luke Cage and the kind of cool character and the cool soundtrack when he comes in and starts beating guys up, you know, his nice charisma to him, you get more of that here. If you liked his side characters, they're back. The nurse character, she's back. All those sorts of people, if you like them, they're back. Uh, likewise with Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, whatever you liked about each of these shows, their attitude, their side characters, their lead characters, it's all back here. And it very much is taking four shows and cramming them together. And the shows, um, while each having their own flavor, weren't like radically different from each other. It works to bring them all together and you can see the thorough line throughout all of them and the tones mix nicely. It works well. Likewise, um, the story here feels a lot more it feels tighter than any of the previous seasons. So each of the previous shows was over 10 episodes. And well, the big complaint for each of those series was kind of kind of meandered in the middle. It started off strong and it kind of felt like we were going all over the place. And then it ended nicely or in Iron Fist. They didn't say those positive things. But with the Daredevil, Luke Cage, other ones, it, there's normally really positive things. But then the story kind of went off at some point in time. Here, it's only eight episodes, and so it's much tighter, it's much more focused, and so you're able to kind of have one story told without needing to go off on all these rabbit trails in different directions. What, like, it takes a couple episodes to get our characters together, they have a first battle, they learn a little bit more depth things, and then we build towards a climax. It fits nicely together in a single story arc. Likewise, uh, the set of villains, you get a bunch of them since there's five fingers of the hand plus their main henchman person. And so therefore there's there, there's interesting dynamics between them because it's not like the hand is all on the same page. There's a lot of, when you're the evil organization that's kind of trying to run things behind the scenes, there's a lot of power struggles going on in there. So was, there's a lot of cool performances, several people coming back from previous seasons. And since they're playing off each other a lot more, you get some really nice moments there. Sigourney Weaver being a new addition to that. Of course, she's a great actress and it's, um, uh, like that subdued, it's not like she's doing this hammy over the top thing. She's very subdued, smart, calculated, um, trusting in herself sort of thing. And so it just adds a nice little flavor to it. Not mind blowing. I'm not, she's not going to get any Oscars or not Oscars because it's a TV show. Not going to get any Emmy nominations here or anything like that. That's not the sort of buzz. But she, of course, brings a strong gravitas to the role. Our main henchman who turns out to be Electra in this. It's not like a plot twist. That's, that's just established uh, or a spoiler or anything. That's just known. Uh, just uh, throughout is just very cool, delivers on all the action, mysterious, has some twists and turns as to her loyalties and how she kind of fits into all this. They do some really cool things with her. Also, I will add into this, there are actual stakes in the season. 
people die. Now, there's because of the lore and things, there's resurrection in this universe, so perhaps things could change. But like characters that you like die, limbs get cut off of people. There are actual consequences that you think, all right, these some of these people aren't coming back. Maybe some they might find some way they've built in some lore so they can bring it back. But you know things are changing after this season moving forward with the world that they're big building here. And so the actual consequence is much more than in the MCU itself. Uh, people die here and pretty sure a bunch of them are gonna stay dead. Uh, not all the fights are great, but some of the fights are great. And it's generally t speaking ties back to if it's Daredevil stuff, it's awesome. If it's Electra stuff, it's awesome. Um, if it's Iron Fist, it's a mixed bag. It's, it, it plays out very much like the TV shows. The stuff that was awesome about Daredevil is awesome here. The stuff that was weird about <laughs> Iron Fist is weird here. Um, so there's some really cool fight scenes in it. Some of it's in the trailer, but just even just getting to see our lead characters spar off of each other and battle each other is interesting to see. And so pretty cool in that regard. And so uh, all in all, a bunch of really positive things, a tighter story. It's nice to see these characters rapport, interact with each other. Some really cool fight scenes and delivered on a lot of things. There's a number of things I did not care for about this season. So let's move along into the bad. The first thing I just got to talk about is what I talked about in my uh, uh, review for the first episode. And oh, wow, I don't know what they were thinking. I really don't know why they started off so dull and have a full episode of people drinking coffee, going to the bar, getting out of prison, um, having Luke Cage coffee in a girl's apartment. If you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking about. Um, just like, it was just all set up. Hey, let's, here's what happened since last time, but not moving the story forward. And they introduce some elements that lead to where the story's going. And you go, okay, I see how these things tie back together. But the story doesn't really get started until the very end of the episode and things kind of get into motion. It's, it's so it's just so dull and easily the worst episode of the season was the first one. And it's not that individual scenes were bad, but some of the Iron Fist stuff was. But overall, just so many just characters sitting there like, OK, are we going to get started? Like you couldn't put you couldn't put two fight scenes in this. It starts off with kind of one in the dark, not so great. And then there's no fights in the rest of the episode. So really dull. So weird way to start things off. Second gigantic thing you got to talk about is just Iron Fist and his supporting cast are just the weakest. Um, if you watch Daredevil, every like the casting of you like everyone in it sticks. Awesome. I forgot to mention that a positive stick comes back. He's great as always has these little one liners. They're funny. <laughs> great attitude that he brings to things so brutal and how he does things. So he's awesome. Then you look at all the, all the characters in Iron Fist and you're like, I don't, none of them are very good. My wife didn't even watch Iron Fist and she's like, what's with this sidekick girl? Like, she's not likable at, at all. And she kind of, there were things about Iron Fist she liked, but like he had moments that were good. But for the most part, he's the same whiny, insecure, hot-headed, foolish guy that he was before. And I'm not sure how much of that is just the performance and the guy just can't sell it well enough or how much of it is he's the way he's written and he's written in a way that makes him whiny and impulsive. But there's just a number of things about him that just uh, just clearly the weak link. Whenever it cuts the scenes of just him, it's like, other characters, when he's with the other characters, it brings out some of the best of him because he can make some one liners and stuff in there. And so he's kind of like that. Or likewise, in the big fight scenes, some, like it, it brings out the best in what he can do. But there's still a lot of standalone scenes of him that are just not good. Standalone scenes with his side characters that are not enjoyable. Everyone else's side characters and main cast are better cast and more likable characters to see on screen as compared to him. So that's that's like 25 percent of the show just right there, like pulling the whole thing down, unfortunately. Uh, somewhat of a positive in a sense to the nature of it is that this season makes him look better and it makes his show look better because it, it continues the lore there and it's better than his show and it's a better context for him. But as for him for this show, he brings it down. There's also too many scenes in the whole series throughout the whole thing where um, Luke Cage is like, what? That's unbelievable. There's ninjas in this city. I can't believe that. And then Jessica Jones goes, what? Are you serious? Resurrection? That's ludicrous. Why are we even talking about this? And the whole time you're thinking, 
You're bulletproof. You're super strong. Aliens invaded the city. You've seen crazy things for the last five years. You have superpowers. Like, why are we acting still like the miraculous is outside the ordinary when you're superheroes? You're around a blind guy that's a super ninja. There's a guy that his hand glows. And so there's some stuff in it where you just start going, all right, why do we keep having this conversation about how unbelievable things are? It just starts getting into lazy writing and things where you you're going, this, this doesn't make a lot of sense the way you're, you're handling this. So those are the negatives that would immediately come to mind. Boring first episode. Iron Fist still eh, kind of sucks. I like to show more than most, but it kind of sucked. And then just the, the way some of it's handled, the dialogue, the police being like, what? What's all that? What? We don't believe you about ninjas. Really? It was an alien invasion five years ago. Wait, wait, why, you're talking to a superhero that has super strength. Why are we pretending like fantastic stuff doesn't happen? So those are the big ones that kind of stuck out to me. Overall, once it got going, the first episode, really slow. Second episode, quicker, but not so slow. And then from three onward, just got really good and delivered on one I wanted. Uh, oh, yeah. The one other final kind of negative thing I had written down. There's no big wow moments. Um, um, so like for me, I think about Daredevil season one and two, and you, you point to that hallway fight scene, the stairwell fight scene. You talk about several of the, like the character moments with Daredevil and Punisher having a sit down, well, Punisher sit, having sit downs with several different people. And there's several like character moments. There's action moments you think of that are just really cool. There's some stuff uh, with Luke Cage when he starts getting heroic and he battles some guys. And you really like that about that scene. There's just not those wow moments that you just go to. That was awesome. There's not as many cool shots, like most of the coolest shots of the whole season or in the trailer. Now there's other good scenes. Those scenes go on longer and there's things you like in them, but the actual like money shots, a lot of, almost all of them are actually in the trailer, unfortunately. Um, and they, they showed too much in, in some of those regards. So that's kind of my take on it. Very solid season. Uh, once it got going, uh, you gotta get through that first episode and the first episode might make you a little bit nervous and your threshold for boredom might be a little bit high in the second episode, but it does get going. Definitely improves after the first episode, at least if that was my experience uh, overall. And if I were to give this one a rating, I, I mean, I'd, I'd probably go uh, eight out of 10, I think is where I would go on it. Uh, it's not best of the year. It's not mind blowing. It's not the best of the Marvel Netflix shows. It's very solid once it gets going. Uh, Could have used some more wow moments. Iron Fist does hold it back, but overall, it's a show with stakes, some great characters from three of the four shows that are brought into this one. Uh, and if I'm being honest, I, it left me pretty satisfied by the time it got to the end. I was like, all right, I want more of this. Yeah, this is why I liked this show. Was, Luke Cage ended weekly. Iron Fist was pretty weak throughout. This one just got better as it went along and kind of left me going, yes, yeah, I can't wait for more of this and to see where the different seasons of the different shows coming in the future. I, I'm very excited for them. Anyway, that's my take on it. How about you? Tell me your thoughts about it down below in the comments section. Love to hear your thoughts. Also, no, I'm going to be ranking all six seasons of of the Marvel Netflix universe coming up, I believe tomorrow that will be out and I'll talk about all that. I'd love to hear your take on it. But if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews like this one. I do ranking videos every single weekend, but I don't wanna just talk about TV shows and movies. I wanna talk about TV shows and movies with you. So join me in the comment section and thank you so much for watching.